so that's about 73 yards from over there so that's right in my wheelhouse for a 60 degree lob wedge i can't wait to show you this So in this corner over here, we're gonna put like a 20 by 20 putting green. We'll kind of consider the rest of it fairway. And at the same time, it's still my yard. Hey there, it's Pete with GCI Turf. Hope you're having a great day today. I had planned on filming all the mowing and all that, but man, I had to hustle up and get it done. Uh, we had like a midday crazy thunderstorm. I mean, I got, I got water gushing up around my feet now. So I just had to get it mowed before that rain come in. So, lawn care applicators. How many times have you uh, heard this statement? I, I know for myself, I've heard it multiple times. I can't even put a number to it. It's happened so many times with me over the past 18 years or so. And the conversation will go kind of like this. It's me speaking with a customer and we're talking about turf and grass and what do you want? What are you looking for? What are your goals with your yard? All kind of things. And, and out of the blue, they'll say, hey Pete, I want a golf course yard. So in order for me to answer that question uh, in a proper way, you got to realize and understand uh, kind of the mindset of the customer. So over the years, I've asked that question. What do you mean you want a golf course yard? And they will say, hey, Pete, I want a yard that is green in the summer that I can mow really, really short. That's typically the answer I get. And I'll say, okay, well, we can do that. You need to have a Bermuda grass yard. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. I don't want Bermuda. I don't, I know what Bermuda is. I don't want that stuff in my yard. No, no. And I'll be like, you want a golf course yard, right? Well, predominantly, at least in my area, that's what golf courses have for their grass is Bermuda. And I tell you what, when, when folks find that out and they hear me tell them that, the conversation goes south quickly. I mean like the heck with that, I don't want to have nothing to do with it. And of course from time to time they say yeah, let's roll with it. So it all depends on that particular customer. So the point of me telling you all that is this. If you are looking for a golf course yard, you need to have the same kind of turf grass that they grow on golf courses, right? Like I said earlier, typically it's the height of cut is what folks are going at. Fescue, you can't cut it at a half an inch. You can, I don't know of a fescue you can cut at one inch. I'm sure there are isolated instances across the country somewhere that somebody cuts their fescue that short and it does well. But in the grand scheme of thing, the average Joe homeowner cannot and should not cut their fescue that low. I mean, of course, it's your yard, you cut it how you want to, but I'm just warning you, you're going to burn it up. What I am going to do, I am going to attempt to create a miniature golf course right here in my front yard. Way down there at the end of the parking lot, it's about 73 yards or so to the center of this uh, green. You can kind of see I've got it outlined out with some rope right here. That kind of shows you where the green's actually going to be. That's a real good comfortable lob wedge from there to here for me. And I'll put me a little chipping mat down there, a little artificial uh, synthetic turf mat down there. And of course, if I want to shorten that yardage up, I just move the mat. Then everything else out here for the yard, we're going to kind of consider it fairway. Now, why don't I stick it right in the middle? Well, there's a couple of reasons for that. One, I want it as far from the road as I can possibly get it. A little bit of a safety issue there. 
No, I'm not going to shank a ball over into the road. I, I'm just not going to do that. Number two, this area is the wettest area I have on the entire yard. What's that got to do with the price of eggs in China? Well, I'm going to solid tine aerate this area, and then I'm going to come out with some really super fine sand and sand level the green because you know the lower you go I'm, I'm gonna attempt to get this uh tipped up at an eighth inch that that's my goal is to have it putting green height now tipped up it and typically a variety that you would do that with but i you know i like a good challenge so i'm gonna try it and the lower you cut the turf the smoother the surface needs to be for scalping reasons so by solid tine aerating this and sand leveling it, I can open up some drainage. That will allow this area right here to not stay so daggone wet. So those two reasons are why I really picked this area to put the putting green. So the number one thing I've had to consider is growth control. Control the growth, growth regulator. So if you want a big, long, drawn out scientific explanation of that, you can search Google and find all the info you want. In a nutshell, growth regulator is gonna allow the Bermuda grass to grow this way, sideways, more so upright. Bermuda is a very, very aggressive grower in the summer when it gets hot. I mean, you can mow this stuff every other day. Matter of fact, I do mow it every other day. When I'm creating a very, very short cut turf, I'm gonna have to mow it even more. The reason for that is, I don't wanna get it cut down low at my maintenance height of cut, and it get out of hand, and then me have to take it all the way back down, because I'm gonna cut all the color out of it, right? So, growth regulators will help me control the height of cut. It's some kind of gibberellic acid stuff, and I don't really know how it works, and really don't care how it works, to be honest with you. Uh, we've been spraying T-Nex in a new on athletic fields for a while, and we get some really good results out of it. At the end of the day, that's really all I care about. So, I'm a little torn on my fairway height of cut, okay? I'm either going to go a quarter inch, which actually is at three-eighths of an inch right now. I cut it down a little bit lower. I've been cutting it at a half an inch. It's at three-eighths right now. I'm either going to go a quarter inch from my maintenance height of cut, or I'm going to let it grow back up a little bit and maintain it at a half an inch. That's the fairway. The reason I'm considering that half inch height of cut for my fairway is so there's a drastic difference. Half inch and an eighth of an inch, that's a pretty good height change when you're talking about a shortcut turf. I want the green to actually be able to stand out. I don't want it to really blend into the yard. So chances are I'll probably stay at a half inch height of cut on the fairway and work on getting this down to an eighth inch. So the process will be, I'll come in here and scalp this. I'll, I'll take it down low, baby. Once it starts to leaf out and it gets back to my maintenance height of cut, I'll hit it with a growth regulator. And it's only gonna be spoon feeding type applications, like super, super light doses of iron and nitrogen. That way it'll help me maintain my color. And in that scalp process, that's when I'll come in here and do some sand leveling and that kind of thing. And all that'll be done by hand with hand tools so I can really, really super fine tune this because I want the golf ball to roll smoothly. I have put it on some very, very, very high-end Bermuda grass greens and they roll incredibly good. So I am trying to mimic that right here. Now something else I'm gonna do right here is a little test and I'm just really doing it for my own pleasure just so I'll know. I've never really had the opportunity to do this side by side by side, but now that I do, I'm going to do it. Of course, you'll get to reap the benefits of that because you'll watch the whole thing. But I'm gonna split this long ways three ways, okay? That'll be like section one, section two down the middle, section three over there. On one section, I'm gonna run T-necks only. On another section, I'm gonna run a new only. And then on the third section, I'm gonna run T-Nex plus a new. That way I can kind of compare the different uh, suppressions in the turf and kind of see which one works the best. So it'll actually help me in my business moving forward. Not to mention it'll help me out here the rest of the year and next year and the year after that and so on. 
So I went on the internet today and I ordered my flag stick and I ordered my cup today, my hole cutter. And then other than that, I really don't need anything. Hey, you never know until you try, right? That's always been my motto with almost everything I've ever done in long care. So, hey, we'll just have to wait and see if all this works out and plans out. Say, so, hey, I can't wait to get my lob wedge out and be able to stick it tight right here and then knock me in a little birdie putt. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, as always, I appreciate you taking time out of your day to watch, and I'll check you later.